Hi everyone. I think many of you have already seen the pilot episode of The Amazing Digital Circus, and many of you have a lot of questions after watching it, but probably the most important question is, what happened to Kaufmo? While you may think that everything is clear and obvious, I want to assure you in advance that it is not quite so. Kaufmo is a full-fledged member of the circus like everyone else, or at least he was. And if you listen to the intro of the episode where all the characters were introduced, originally all the character names were sung as they were supposed to be, including the part about Kaufmo, but as soon as his name was said, where is he? And instead of a real character, we just saw a cardboard cutout with a clown picture. I would like to say that Pomni is also a clown, but in this video, when I use the word clown, I am referring specifically to Kaufmo. How long Kaufmo has been a resident of the circus is not exactly known, but many people I've talked to, including myself, think that Kaufmo has been in the damn circus for a relatively short time. As Kinger once said, Kaufmo has been acting more and more out of character lately. One could even say that our clown has been acting very strange. After all, he has been talking about a way out all the time. This may sound strange, but Kaufmo is a clown, and a clown is the backbone of the circus. I mean, really, can you think of a circus that doesn't have a clown in it? My point is that Kaufmo was the star of an amazing digital circus before he disappeared. Pomni, like Kaufmo, is not really a clown, but rather a jester. But I don't think this is a very fundamental point. Maybe every clown who joins this circus automatically knows a little bit more than all the other characters. This is very easy to prove just by looking at the reaction of all the other characters in the show to Pomni's words about the exit. I'm more than sure that if Kaufmo had been with them, he would have realized what Pomni was talking about. Many characters have stated that before Kaufmo became so uptight, he was a good-natured and funny guy who understood the horror of what was happening more than anyone else, yet remained just as cheerful and upbeat. As Ragatha told us, our clown was always trying to make a joke or cheer everyone up in some way, but not everyone appreciated it. Before the scattered Kaufmo attacked Ragatha, she confessed to him and apologized for not appreciating all that Kaufmo did for them. To sum up this chapter, Kaufmo was the soul of the group, always with a funny story or joke to tell, but at some point, things didn't go according to plan. We were often told that it was the characters who started going crazy that scattered. Even Zubal said it was very strange that it was Kaufmo who scattered because she thought Kinger would be next. Even you and I have clearly noticed that this chess piece has major mental problems. He is very anxious, screams all the time, behaves very strangely, and yet he is the longest-lived inhabitant of this amazing digital circus. But it was Kaufmo who scattered. We all remember Kinger saying that Kaufmo was always talking about getting out. This obsession became Kaufmo's main problem, which led to his disappearance. In this case, one could easily argue that it's not the characters who suffer from mental disorders who disappear, but those who have gone mad with thoughts of leaving, which is Kaufmo. But this is just an assumption that we will support with facts. It's strange that Kaufmo was fine, but at some point he went crazy. We have already seen that Kaufmo started out as a funny character, but his jokes did not bring anyone any joy, which did not affect his condition. Gradually, he went from being a happy, cheerful guy to a depressed man with obsessive thoughts that dictated the rules of his life. It is not known exactly what kind of relationship our clown had with the other characters, but we can safely say that at least Ragatha always laughed at his jokes, and Jax did not care about Kaufmo or anyone else. In the midst of his budding depression, Kaufmo didn't have enough support to get out of it and get back to normal. The other characters hardly encouraged him, thinking he was crazy when he started talking his way out of it, which only reinforced his belief that no one here needed him. Everyone remembers what Kaufmo's room looks like? I doubt it's always looked like this. And I don't think Kaufmo drew all this in one day. It takes weeks or months to draw something like this. But no one has ever visited Kaufmo's room to see how he's doing or to ask how he's feeling. In Kaufmo's room, you can see a huge number of exit inscriptions. There are various pictures that we don't understand, where Kaufmo is depicted as an evil clown, or the strangest picture where he has drawn himself but only in a dissipated form. But the main picture in Kaufmo's room is a drawing of an embittered cane who has huge fangs like a dog or a wolf instead of the usual teeth, chasing after the unfortunate clown. But this drawing will come in handy in the next chapter, so we won't focus on it for now. Kaufmo is depressed and left all alone in this merry circus, and then he decides to find a way out. All of the above was a huge disappointment to fully understand what comes next in the video. After that, Kaufmo started going crazy looking for a way out. He realized that he had to get out of here because everything shown here is a lie. We all noticed that strange drawing where the evil cane is chasing Kaufmo with the desire to eat him or just destroy him. But why is that? If you think about it, Kane actually becomes very strange and evil at the mention of the exit, as proven by the scenes where Pomni starts acting as strange as Kaufmo did in the past. If Kaufmo saw the exits, he most likely saw the void, as well as the basement where all the scattered characters are hidden in the form of monsters. 
This is supported by the drawings that can be seen on Kaufmo's wall just before he disappears. Realizing all the horrors of further life here, Kofmo was able to imagine one of the exits, after which he found himself in the same office as Pomni, but not understanding what to do next, he quietly explored it and came to the last door leading to the void. Like Pomni, Kane was able to recognize this and teleported to Kaufmo to stop him and take him back to the circus. But Kaufmo, determined to leave, tried a few more times, and each time Kane came to him and managed to stop him. Perhaps after one of these journeys, the very situation that Kaufmo had painted on his wall as a clue to the rest of the circus that Kane was not to be trusted and should be feared. After many failed attempts, Kaufmo has an idea how to outsmart Kane and get into the void without anyone knowing. But why the void? After Kaufmo realizes that Kane is not who he says he is, he assumes that if the void was just a room that leads nowhere and where the character just stays forever, then most likely Kane would just leave Kaufmo there to wander around for the rest of his life after so many attempts to save him. But no, he saved him every time, which means that by going through the void, the character is going somewhere he shouldn't be. There would be another door leading to the basement, and Kaufmo knew it because he had gotten there that way himself. From all of this, Kaufmo realized that there was a real world outside of the void. By outsmarting Kane, Kaufmo was able to get out of the amazing digital circus. Once Kane realized this, there was nothing he could do, for all his power ended only inside the amazing digital circus. The only option was to make it look like Kaufmo was a complete psycho and had gone so far into himself that he disintegrated and became a monster. In general, Kane always does this because I find it very strange that all monsters look exactly the same. It's as if they were pre-programmed NPS that Kane creates in such cases. And so we can say that all the other characters who are no longer in the circus didn't dissipate at all, but on the contrary were able to gather all their strength into one fist, despite all the horror going on inside them, and finally get out of this terrible place. But we can ask a logical question, why do the monsters stay in the basement after Kane puts them there, if they are pre-made NPS? Thinking about this question, I found the answer. See, Kane has to maintain this mechanism in the circus, that when you start seeing exits and freaking out about how to get out of the circus, a character is bound to see the basement behind one of the doors and go to Kane for an explanation of what he has seen. At this point, Kane will explain that all characters who suffer the same thing as Kaufmo will definitely become the same and end up in the basement, and these thoughts might scare a potential refugee away from the idea of escaping the circus. When Kaufmo manages to get out of the circus, the most important thing in his life will be to understand the principle of how humans get there. After all, it has long been known that only Kane and Bubble are artificial intelligence, and all the other characters are human. Maybe it will take weeks, months, or years. But given Kaufmo's tenacity and what this circus has done to him, it seems to me that Kaufmo will be able to understand this process and stop it, thus preventing even the slightest chance for new people to enter the amazing digital circus. I hope you enjoyed my analysis of the whole Kaufmo story. I have a lot of interesting things in store for you, so be sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll say goodbye.